Hello fam, it's been a minute. I hope you've been well. Now typically when I am in the midst of a storm, I don't usually talk about it until I'm on the other side of it. But something in my heart said, maybe you should share this in real time so that people can actually see how you practice the principles that you preach. I'll try to make this as brief as possible. Life, she comes at you swiftly, unexpectedly, and often relentlessly. I've had a great job of traveling all over the world. I've worked with wonderful people. And for the last 16 years, I've worked for a Fortune 500 company. And it has been one of the most amazing experiences of my life. Baby, a couple of weeks ago, <laughs> I'm home in Atlanta. It's a beautiful day outside, right? The sun's beaming, the sky is blue. I've got the sunroof open. I am in line at the Starbucks ordering my grande matcha tea latte iced with almond milk, life is good. I'm sitting in the drive-thru and I get a phone call. I look at the caller ID and the call is from the director of my department. Now, typically the director calls me if it's my birthday or some other special occasion, maybe like a company anniversary, uh, but not just to chit chat. It was my day off and I'm very clear about establishing boundaries at work. When I'm on, I'm giving 100%. When I'm off, that's my time. And so I really do my best to honor those boundaries and that's how I can recharge so that I can continue to give 100% when I'm in the workplace. I'm waiting for my latte and I'm taking the call and then the director says, well, hang on, I'll patch you into the rest of the group. So it patches me in, says I only need about 15 minutes of your time. I really would appreciate if you would stay on. So I'm like, oh, sure, what do you need? Grab my latte, take a sip, pull out, make sure the drink is right, the drink is right. And I'm pulling out of the, the drive-through. And as the call progresses, the director proceeds to say that they are going to eliminate uh, most of my department. Excuse me? Immediately, I'm anxious because now it's like fight or flight because who are they gonna keep? Who are they gonna get rid of? Well, what am I gonna do for health insurance? What am I gonna do to replace my salary? You know, I'm very anxious and literally, I pulled the car over. <laughs> I circled back around and went into back into the Starbucks parking lot. And I stopped, took a few deep breaths. And I said, okay, you've received the news. There's nothing you can do about this, Lonel. So now, this is where the rubber meets the road. Are you going to choose fear or faith? Because you can't do both. I took another sip of that latte. Based on my life experience, I know if I... If I bet on myself and I choose faith, it'll be all right. When I had a few, a few minutes of anxiety and literally in that moment, I just released it. I got back on the highway, I came home and then I thought about, you know, a lot of the things that needed to be done and I just got still. I came home, I did a meditation, did a little journaling and the key though, because I, I, my mind still did wander like, well, you know, but what is it that you're still good at? Or what would you want to do? Or who's hiring? And then it, those, those thoughts would come in and I'd be like, ah, ah, surrender, surrender, surrender. So I had to let them go, right? So that became a practice and a mantra for me. When I say surrender, I mean letting go of the worry and the angst as best you can. And sometimes surrender is a continuous process, right? It's not like you just surrender once and it's done. Those thoughts still come back. So I, every time they do come back though, it's like take a deep breath and surrender and release it, just release it. I kept telling myself that, right? And so by the time I got back to the house, I kid you not, <laughs> someone had reached out to me about uh, something that they had mentioned, possibly work, me working with them on a project like years ago and wanted to follow up on that. And in that moment, I realized I'd made the right decision. Now, I don't know if that project is going to come to fruition, but the fact that it, that messaging came to me moments after I did the surrender exercise, I knew I was on the right path. As I began to tell people what transpired at work, that became the obvious question. What are you going to do now? <laughs> and my response is really true. I have no idea. But what I do know is that I'll be all right. In these circumstances, when life changes like this, I always land on my feet. And I don't say that from a space of arrogance. I say that from a place of experience. I know that when I do my part, when I practice gratitude, uh, when I meditate, 
when I try to do right, when I try to serve others, when I just try to live my best life, these type of abundant blessings overflow. So that's how I know it's going to be all right. It's worked in so many countless incidents prior to this in my life. Why wouldn't it work now? So now is not the time for me to switch the game up and start worshiping fear. Now, while I am unsure of what my next move will be in life, I do look forward to seeing this process unfold. If you're open to the process of surrender, then the next door that opens is usually even more glorious. So I'm confident in that. And instead of me trying to force a particular narrative for my life, I know that in surrender, you kind of see the end goal or you see where you want to be, but the how, that's what you give up. You just keep looking for the next right move. And that's what I know I have to do now. But I'm really open to the process of where the universe is going to send me. So instead of trying to just focus on how am I gonna get to that end goal, I'm more focused on what's the next right move. And if I take that one step, I'm sure it will be revealed to me the following step and then the following step. And that's where the joy is, is actually in the process. So letting it go, uh, paying attention and being obedient to the whispers that, that come into my life. So let's see how this unfolds. I hope you'll come on the journey with me. Who knows? But I'll keep it open and honest and transparent. Now, as far as the next right move, what's the next step for me? immediately is to go get my laundry out of the dryer <laughs> and finish packing because tomorrow I'm headed on a 10 day trip overseas and this will be the perfect opportunity for me to decompress, meditate, fellowship with friends and really recalibrate for this next exciting chapter of the journey. So I share this to say that if you're navigating a storm Get out of your own way. Surrender to the process. Speak the answer of what you want to experience or what you want to achieve, no matter what that is. But get out of the way of trying to control how you get there. I'm Lonnell Williams. Thanks for tuning in. Always stand in your light.